Hi there, Alex again. This is the first screencast that we'll be using in lieu of our regular class for Tuesday, October 8th. Uh, Tuesday, October 8th is an online class only. Uh, I'm unfortunately not able to be in class because I'm out of the country. Uh, but you will be watching a couple of these screencasts that are relevant to the content for today. And you will be discussing the content in an online forum that is posted on course sites. So please uh, do watch all of the screencast videos and make comments uh, and ask questions in the discussion forum that is linked on our course site for today's activities. Make sure that you take a look at what Emily has also posted since she is the discussion leader for this week. And uh, we'll move forward that way. So just to start out, I'd also like to remind you that today on Tuesday, October 8th, the uh, part one of your proposal is due today. Uh, there is a place for you to upload it to the class website. There is a rubric available for you to take a look at what actually um, I will be looking at when I am uh, trying to figure out what grade you have on that. And uh, I'd also like for you to email it to me so that I have access to it that way as well. For our screencast, we're going to be discussing several things. Um, we're going to be discussing some uh, quantitative discussion topics related to data and variable relationships, how to measure those relationships, what different ways of doing correlation are, um, and then how to think about correlations and report them. This also associates with what you'll find in Andy Field's textbook that we're using called uh, Discovering Statistics Using SPSS. Then we will also be talking a little bit about some of uh, the problems with post-colonial, the problems and persistence of technology and imperialism, and how to be colonized or researched from our Decolonizing Methodologies book by Smith. And again, uh, Emily is the discussion leader, and uh, we will. these are what you should be reading for this week. Uh, I encourage you to do that. I think they'll be, it'll be very interesting. And remember that our following week we're on pacing break, so we won't be actively meeting for class. Having said that, if you have any questions in the meantime, you can always email me. I'll be available at any time via email, and we'll respond as quickly as possible. And now we'll move on to talking about measuring relationships. So how do we think about relationships between variables? That's really the topic for our uh, quantitative section today. And we can start by asking, what is a relationship? Let me get my pen ready to go. Well, a relationship is pretty easy. When change in one variable is associated with change in another variable. And we have a couple of terms that we use that are related. One is covariance. Covariance simply measures how two variables co-vary, so how they vary together. And it's the simplest way to see whether variables are associated with each other or not. A correlation is a standardized measure of the degree of relationship between two or more variables. So a correlation is a way to measure or to standardize this covariance. So how could we talk about relationships between these things, between uh, reading, between computer work, between art, between athletics? Uh, could we say that they are associated? Could we say that people who are doing one sort of thing more frequently, let's say reading frequently, also tend to be more artistic? Could we say that students who are involved in athletics are also more likely to be computer savvy or is, or is frequency of involvement in athletics associated with frequency and involvement in uh, computer use? These would be the kinds of questions that we might be able to discuss. So let's test ourselves a little bit. What is a positive relationship? Is it when a high score on one variable is associated with a high score on the other? Is it when a low score on one variable is associated with a low score on the other? Is it both A and B, or is it none of the above? Well, it's both A and B, and I'll tell you why. If we were to plot this, and let's just do X, Y. 
A positive relationship, when plotted, looks like this. Right? There are all the different cases that will be plotted somewhere around this, this line. Right? But this line is indicating the positive relationship. When variable x goes up, variable y goes up. So when a high score on one variable is associated with a high score on the other. High on y is high on x. It's also b, when a low score on one variable is associated with a low score on the other. Low on y, low on x. That should meet there. Right? So it's both a and b. A positive relationship is both of these things. How about a negative relationship? Is that when a low score on one variable is associated with a low score on the other? Is that when a low score on one variable is associated with a high score on the other or vice versa? Is it both A and B or is it none of the above? Well, it's B. When a low score on one variable is associated with a high score on the other or vice versa. And again, let's plot it. X, Y, and let's say that these are our observed data points. And if we were to plot a line, it would look like this. When a low score on one variable is associated with a high score on the other. All right, so here's high, here's low, here's low, here's high. A low score on Y is associated with a high score on X. And a low score on X is associated with a high score on Y. So a negative relationship is when a low score on one variable is associated with a high score on the other variable, or vice versa. How about no relationship? Well, no relationship can be, or maybe we should ask, what is no relationship? Is it when there is only some relationship between the variables? Is it when a score on one variable is just as likely to be associated with a low score on the other as it is with a high score? Is it both A and B, or is it none of the above? Oh, it's B. When a score on one variable is just as likely to be associated with a low score on the other as it is with a high score. And if we plot something that is a no relationship, uh, it often looks like this. Right? There's no rhyme or reason to it. So, you can't plot a, uh, a positive line because that there's no regression towards the mean that way. You can't plot a negative line. Um, it's, if anything, it's a flat line. And that could also be something that's more tightly uh, observed right around that. Right? There's no relationship here. It's not positive or negative. So a high score on the X is the same for Y. A low score on X is the same for Y. Okay. Uh, another way to look at it would be just a straight up and down line. A high score on Y is the same for X. A low score on Y is the same for X. So covariance is the simplest way to look at whether two variables are associated. We just want to look at whether or not they co-vary. So if two variables are related, then changes in one variable correspond to similar changes in the other variable. That would be the positive or the negative association, not the no association. Therefore, when one variable deviates from its mean, we expect the other related variable to deviate from its mean in a similar way. And again, the, the scatter plots I just drew with the fitted lines uh, will demonstrate what that would look like for a positive association and for a negative association. So let's talk about variance versus covariance. The variance of a single variable represents the average amount that the data vary from the mean. There's simply a way that we calculate the variance to look at how much variation there is from the mean. Okay. So and if we think about it, uh, we, could, we could actually plot this, right? and we could say, all right, uh, here's the mean. 
but the data looks like this. Right, so we have variance, 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 variance that we can measure. We can measure all of those distances from the mean. And so for each of these individual scores, that x sub i, let's see if I can erase the last one. Ah, there we go. These are the individual scores that we have in our data set. This is the mean. So this is the score minus the mean. And we simply square that. And we add all of those squared sums of differences from the mean. And we divide them by n minus 1, degrees of freedom. Right? If we were to spell this out, and we're just now uh, literally expanding this equation, right? xi minus m, x, the individual scores minus the mean squared, is simply this. The individual scores minus the mean times the individual scores minus the mean. So that is variance. And remember, we've been working with x and y, so now we're just talking about x. But what if we wanted to look at how two variables co-varied, an x and a y, variable x and variable y. So that would be the average amount that the combined data vary from the mean. So in, instead of, uh, let me erase my ink again, instead of squaring this, squaring this part, xi minus m, and just spelling it out, xi minus m times xi minus m. We are looking at the x variable and the y variable. And we're looking at how that co-varies, co how that varies with each other. And this is called a cross product deviation. Because you're looking at the difference from the mean for each of the individual scores for x and each of the individual scores for y summed together divided by n minus 1. So let's use a little example. Um, let's say we uh, collected some marketing data and we were looking at uh, subjects would be the participants, so participant 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 7. These are different people, right? And then we had them watch a different number of advertisements about packets, whatever the packet is, packets of sugar, packets of salt, packets of pretzels, I don't know. And subject one watched one ad, subject two watched two ads, all the way down to sub subject seven watching seven ads. And we were trying to see if they watched more ads, would they buy more packets? Right? So this is the data that we collected in our little marketing study. We got the mean and the standard deviation for each of these uh, variables which could be variable x and variable y. And if we were to plot out the deviations from the mean, we've got the subjects here, right? We've got the ads and the packets. And we've got them uh, on different mean lines. So the number of uh, packet spot, because these are the pink ones, and the average for the number of ads watched. Okay? And we're simply looking at the difference from the mean. So let's go back here. The mean for ads watched is 4. Right? That's where we are, 4. The mean for packets bought is 14. So we're at 14. Well, I'm a little off. 14. There we go. Right? And so subject 1 on ads watched, watched 1 ad. And lo and behold, subject one, one ad. That is three below the average. Subject two, two ads. That is two below the average. Subject three, three ads. Right? That is one below the average. And you see how this is going. And we did this both for our packet spot and our ads watched. So we've got the deviations from the mean. That's the x sub i minus m. That's what that is. It's, in this case, 8 uh, minus 14 for this one right here. 